Greetings and welcome once again to the Gaming Codex, a show right right to explain to you all the various terms used to describe video games, the video games industry and other things that are a bit more technical nowadays. And today I actually have two terms for you and they are fast sync and enhanced sync. And the general definition for both of these would be that it's triple buffering. Now we have already discussed a bit about triple buffering back in the V-Sync episode when I was referring to triple buffering V-Sync. Triple buffering in general isn't necessarily just tied to V-Sync, it is a method by which images can be displayed on screen, much like double buffering is as well. It's based on the idea that there are three buffers, three zones of memory. One of them is currently being scanned by the display and being shown on the screen. The next one lies in wait to be switched over to the active buffer and be shown on the screen as well because it contains a full frame, while the last one is currently being written too. Were it not for that intermediate frame, then the switching between the front buffer and the back buffer, the one that's being written to and the one that's being displayed, could happen before either action is complete, so then you get a bit of one frame on the top and a bit of another frame on the bottom of the image that you're seeing on the screen. You get tearing. If VSync is active, then the back buffer can't actually be switched over to the front buffer until the scanning of the buffer is complete and displayed on the screen. If you're running a game at a lower-ish frame rate, that's not a problem. If you're running the game on a higher frame rate, it is a problem because the game essentially stops for you until the frame can be displayed. There is additional input lag there. You are bound by the latency of the monitor, not just in the picture you're seeing but in your control as well. Depending on how it's implemented, triple buffered vSync can also add input lag probably even more than double buffering vSync. But this is not triple buffering vSync we're talking about, it's just triple buffering with a bit of a twist. Nvidia would call it sample triple buffering, that is fast sync in essence and that also is enhanced sync which is AMD's implementation. Sampling triple buffering means that you're not locked to the refresh rate of the monitor in actuality. Well, I mean that you are, like the image you see on the screen will always be locked at the maximum refresh rate of the monitor, but the game logic the system is not. It works on the idea that the game will render all the frames it can, like all of them, at max speed, full throttle, unhinged, completely and utterly mashing the gas until it just blows up, sort of, I mean, it won't blow up. And what's being displayed are, in quotation marks, the best frames. Now what exactly does that mean? Well, that depends on the algorithm used in discarding the frames that aren't being shown. What I can say is that when this feature was first implemented, at least in uh, in FastSync, it didn't work so well, so you got a lot of micro stuttering because when you drop frames, when you don't display frames, you will notice a visible jerkiness of the image because the frame that was supposed to be there but it was in there so fast that it could not get in there and it's not being displayed. You jump from one image to one that is farther away in time so that it seems like the image skips. There's less fluidity in it. This of course happens a lot on lower frame rates but fasting and enhancing they are meant for really high frame rates, and I mean really high. Ideally, from what people have said, about twice your refresh rate. It still doesn't, you know, fix the micro stutter issue. You're still gonna get skipped frames because that's what it does. It, it skips frames. That's what fast sync and enhancing do. They let the game render out all the frames possible and then take a few of them that match the refresh rate of the monitor. That way you don't get a lot of extra input lag because the game is already running at full throttle and you don't have to wait for all the frames that are being rendered to be shown on a fixed refresh rate. Just some of them will be shown. That also means there's no tearing, which leads us to the popular definition. It will eliminate G-Sync and FreeSync. No, Enhanced Sync and Fast Sync are not made to replace G-Sync or FreeSync. They can't. By their definition, which people have misunderstood, 
quite often. G-Sync and FreeSync work when your game, when your GPU is rendering out less frames per second than the monitor's maximum refresh rate. That's where the synchronization takes place, based on the amount of frames being rendered, not on the refresh rate of the monitor. But when you do get to that refresh rate limit, when you go over it, you either have tearing because there's no cap, nothing to stop the frames from just climbing over each other and basically ruining the image, or vSync turns on and you have input lag. Traditionally, that's how it went. But this is where fast sync and enhanced sync come in. Their aim is to replace vSync and offer you a method by which you can still use free sync and g sync but you can go over the limit and still have an experience that is similar to what free sync and g sync will offer if you go under that then fast sync and enhanced sync will not do a superb job or not one as good as g sync and free sync but when you go over and i mean when you go a lot over they can be in theory good because again the actual implementations may from case to case exhibit micro stuttering now what is the marketing definition of fast sync and enhancing will that be the new best thing ever well it's not really new well, in some way it is a bit new because triple buffering as i explained it before isn't actually supported in direct x you can only do it in OpenGL, or if you're really really clever and do it manually or as some people do it they just um, name it triple buffering when it's something completely different but this is triple buffering it's being added at the driver level so the the DirectX limitation, which normally prevented it, can just go sat off. It's there, it works. So, yeah, in that way, it is the new thing. And it can be good. But it's not really super duper new, because, you know, it's been an open jail since the Stone Age, I think. But now it's really coming to its own. And when it works, it works. When it doesn't, it's not the best thing. And you do get micro stuttering. You also cannot use it with older video cards. It is limited to more recent technology with the G. GCN equipped hardware and with Max or Pascal hardware and pretty soon on pair I think. But it should offer you more flexibility in terms of the frame rates at which you can play. So closes another edition of the Gaming Codex. Come back next time when we will talk about a brand new subject. Goodbye.